Hi, it's Charlie Zeese with Stargate Pyramids and the Pyramid Science Foundation. Uh, I know I haven't been uh, recording here in the last few weeks, and I hope everyone had a good holiday season. Uh, the election, it looks like, is now over, so it's time to kind of get back to work in terms of, of doing some videos that I've been meaning to do for quite some time and sort of been piling up over the holidays. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to open up um, uh, a slide presentation that will go over a lot of new things that are going on uh, with Stargate Pyramids and the Pyramid Science Foundation uh, as we start 2021. Uh, for those of you who know the individual on the bottom left hand uh, corner of this page, this is uh, Dr. Um, Alexander Gollett. And I am very, very happy to announce that over the holidays, after two and a half years of trying, I have finally been able to actually come into contact with Dr. Gollett. Uh, and I had my first conversation with him just this last week. Uh, right around New Year's. So uh, we, I have a wonderful translator, Irina, who's working with me. Uh, Dr. Gallad has sent us some information, which uh, Irina is in the process of translating. I am hoping to expand this into uh, a series of conversations, possibly some interviews. I'm not sure if that's going to work particularly well in a live format because Dr. Gallad doesn't speak English. But uh, no matter what I want you all uh, to know about that, uh, moving on to the page that describes that, is that um, I want all of you to send in questions uh, if you have some, and I'll be happy to incorporate those into the questions that I'm going to be asking him. And obviously, as this collaboration continues uh, over time, uh, I hope that we can get uh, those questions that you might have of him um, answered as well. So uh, we're just beginning this process, but after, as I say, over almost three years of trying, uh, I've now established that contact, had the initial conversation. I'm very, very excited uh, about the prospect of being able to, uh, to learn from Dr. Gallad and to uh, collaborate with him on his research. And hopefully we can do some things together in the future. So all of this very exciting news from my perspective. Uh, any new information that I get, I'll be uh, putting out in videos. And obviously, I'll be putting that into the book when that comes out. <clears throat> the next thing I wanted to, uh, to announce, we've been working on this for several months. We now have uh, the first outdoor Russian pyramid, to my knowledge, that's going to be built in the United States, uh, ready to go. Uh, we're going to commence construction here in the next uh, few days. I'm interviewing uh, some people tomorrow to help us with the construction of the pyramid. It's going to be uh, in a location nearby where I live and, and very close to where I previously lived in Duncannon, Pennsylvania, which is about uh, 25 miles uh, northwest of downtown Harrisburg. So this is at the Amethyst Retreat Center. Um, it's a spiritual retreat center uh, that was literally no more than about two miles from where I used to live in that town. And uh, they have agreed uh, to allow us to build it. Uh, again, to my knowledge, it's going to be the first Russian pyramid uh, of, of substance that's been built uh, for public use uh, in an outdoor setting. So um, we expect it's going to be around 20 to 25 feet tall, so it'll be fairly substantial. And uh, as I say, I'm meeting with uh, some potential builders tomorrow, and we should be underway here very shortly. Uh, along those lines, we'll be, uh, you know, giving you updates on this. Uh, we hope to have it ready by around March time frame, and we'll be showing pictures of it. But if there are any of you out there who would have a similar interest in building one of these, we're going to have the experience of doing the first one done here in the next, uh, you know, six weeks or so. So uh, we would be happy to, uh, to help anyone who would like to have one done. Uh, if we can get the funding for it, for it we'll be happy to, uh, to help assist in, um, in the cost of putting up a pyramid uh, 
in a location that you might have in mind. So uh, give me a call if you uh, give me a call if you have some interest in that, or or contact me via email. But we're very excited about this and can't wait to get it started. Now, some new discoveries that I've made. For those of you who have seen my videos recently, you do know that that I have. Um, recently discovered what I think is some pretty profound information about the sacred geometry of Russian pyramids and how it corresponds to uh, the progression of the platonic solids or platonic forms. And uh, I've done several videos on that topic. Uh, about a month ago, I made another new discovery that I want to talk to you about, but I just wanted, to, for those of you who are not familiar with this, uh, the basis of this discovery came from this Robert Lawler diagram that uh, is in Robert Lawler's book, Sacred Geometry, Philosophy, and Practice. And essentially what I was able to do was to take that two-dimensional diagram, which you see on the left, and convert it into three dimensions. And what I found, lo and behold, was that the geometry of the Phi Spiral or the Russian Pyramid, their equivalent, is the geometry that seems to be used and is indicated in this diagram as being the proper geometric uh, angle uh, for the progression of the platonic forms. We're not going to review all that today, but uh, we found numerous examples where these circles uh, either came together uh, at uh, vertices and, uh, uh, or, excuse me, at the at bases and apex or in midpoints and so forth. And there are also so many ratios that could only occur inside this geometry that I was very excited about. This is obviously going to be a new, you know, new part of my book. However, with that said, I've now found even more confirming evidence that this phi cubed scaling uh, ratio is found uh, in other aspects uh, for, from which uh, to, to, to glean some further knowledge and verification of the scaling uh, geometry. And the one that you're seeing here is one that I, as I was uh, working on some book research recently, rereading Richard Merrick's uh, uh, interference theory, and that's where this particular slide comes from, Sure enough, when, when I reread it, I came across this diagram of what's called the Mandelbrot set. I'm not going to go into it today, but for the, this is a very familiar uh, diagram in uh, you know, the world of fractals. And what Richard had done, which I had never seen before, was to scale the various circles uh, that show up in this Mandelbrot set. And lo and behold, once again, we see this phi cubed scaling showing up in the Mandelbrot set. And for those of you, I'm not going to go into great detail, but the Mandelbrot set, the black area, is basically the area in, in short verse that uh, geometrically uh, provides for uh, the possibility of, of scaling uh, anything that basically falls outside of that black square uh, uh, these black circles, or this, uh, in general, the, the Mandelbrot set, uh, is not, is, it's, it's really not going to be uh, it's something that would be, uh, uh, it's going to go to infinity. So there's not really going to be the ability of, for those particular uh, geometric formulas and plots to, uh, to, to manifest into the physical plane. So there seems to be something there. I'm going to be going into uh, some of this in a few minutes uh, as well, but just remember that that condition. The other one is I was rereading Marshall Leffert's uh, cosmometry book. I also noticed that uh, he has a concept inside his book called the five boundary condition. Now, Marshall's also the person who, you know, discussed uh, the phi scaling angle which is essentially the two-dimensional aspect of the uh, Russian pyramid or phi spiral geometry. So uh, again, we're going to go into this in further detail later, but uh, he has noticed that this phi boundary condition, which again seems to be almost like a, a corollary to the, to the Mandelbrot set, the creative uh, area or, or, or geometry is defined with phi cubed, once again, 
playing the fundamental or key role in determining that phi or that creative boundary within the creative process. Now, having found those, I was very pleasantly surprised. I had written um, uh, Renee Hoadley, and I think I, I know I've mentioned her in the past, but I will show you uh, a little bit about her right now. She has a just an amazing website called Cosmic Core, and that's cosmic-core.org. Uh, it's a nonprofit uh, website she's set up. This is a picture of Renee on the, on the right. She's a very talented artist. As you can see, she's doing some beautiful uh, artwork with sacred, sacred geometry. But she has put together an amazing website. And anyway, when Renee got back to me three or four weeks ago, she had finally had a chance to uh, watch the videos that I had done on the relationships between the uh, uh, Russian spiral geometry and the progression of platonic forms. And she's very, very excited about this. Uh, she's written me several times via email and she's working on literally a, a new kind of theory of the creative process. And she's told me that she's going to be sending me that here very shortly. And she's offered to do a series of interviews with me not only to discuss the significance of the research that I found, and she's going to be talking about this new, these new discoveries of uh, the Mandelbrot set in the um, uh, phi boundary uh, condition that Marshall Lefferts has found. And we're going to try to tie all this together. I don't know if it's going to be one or several interviews, but I think we're going to be hearing some fascinating things from Renee. So I'm really, really excited about uh, having her on as well and learning from her uh, as to how all of this ties together. Finally, uh, one last thing that I want to talk to you about. You know, I continue to write <laughs> my book and uh, it's getting longer and longer. Uh, and one of the things that I, I've been trying to toy with uh, for a long time last couple of months is I'm, I'm I was trying to, to decide whether to bring in uh, the topic of the Tartarian Empire. And you may say, well, what would, you know, history have to do with that? Well, the most important thing is, is that this geometry is found uh, in Tartarian architecture. And we also know that uh, from, from uh, information that's on the web, I knew that there was uh, connection to free energy, to health, and so forth. The problem I was having when I was writing the book was I didn't want to write a book on the Tartarian uh, Empire and, and, and the technology and so forth, but one didn't exist, at least to my knowledge, until last week. And I have ordered this book. It's coming in on Saturday. It looks like it is a legitimate uh, study uh, that's covering all the basic topics in the Tartarian Empire, healing, uh, free energy, mud floods, you name it. And uh, I can't wait to receive it. Uh, but I'm assuming that this book, it looks like it's, it's going to be uh, something that we can, can, or I can feel comfortable uh, recommending. I'll be doing a, a video on it. If those of you who have been looking for a decent book on the Tartarian Empire, uh, you may want to check this out. It's available both in a black and white and a color edition paperback. I ordered the black and white. It's about half the price, but uh, you may want to get the color version um, if if you're you know so interested. But uh, assuming that I, I find the information that being substantiated that I have been able to glean, uh, I think that it's going to be really pertinent to to to, to put in a whole section. Uh, regarding this, because this geometry seems to be fundamental to uh, Tartarian architecture, and it seems to have played a critical role in both healing and free energy uh, during uh, that civilization's uh, prominence on the planet. So all of these are very, very exciting things. I can't wait to get started on these. Uh, and as I say, this is the first book that seems to really cover this stuff uh, well, and I can't wait to, uh, to read it and get that information out to you. So there's a lot of information 
that is coming. A lot of uh, uh, interviews. Lisa's going to be on with me next week, and we're going to be uh, doing some interviews as well. So uh, I'm sorry for the hiatus. It's been helpful to me to have some uh, time to, uh, to to write on the book uh, without kind of interruption. And um, I'm grateful for that. I still have a long way to go on it. But um, I look forward to, uh, and, and Lisa does as well, to beginning uh, to do new uh, videos on a more regular basis uh, going forward here in 2021. So I thank you all for watching. As always, uh, tell your friends about Stargate Pyramids and the Pyramid Science Foundation. We're found at www.stargatepyramids.com. And uh, the YouTube page is uh, under Pyramid Science Foundation. We're also now on Rumble and BitChute using the same name, Pyramid Science Foundation. I thank you for watching, and you have a great day.